Hey boys, how's it going? Hey, here's another week, man. But guess what? I think we're almost done with this uh, COVID thing. So that means pretty soon we'll be able to meet. Looking forward to that. You know, one of the things through this whole thing is that God has been faithful to his word. He's kept us safe. He's kept us working. He's provided for us in many ways. And so grateful to see that. You know, here at our church, we they have food giveaways and stuff like that. So you know, it's good to see that the church and uh, fellow people from the church, they're out there ministering to people. So it's good. And it's just a quick reminder that if you guys are in need, you know, at the church here on Saturdays, they're giving out food. So keep that in mind. Hey, I hope you guys are doing the Big Five Challenge. Uh, I've been doing it. Uh, I'm starting, getting sore. So that's a good thing. So I want you guys to keep it up and keep up your homework. And uh, pretty soon we're going to be meeting. So I guarantee you guys, as soon as this is over, give it a couple uh, months or so, we're going to be going on a big camp out just for Outpost 5. So keep it posted, and we'll check you guys out real soon. This is your commanders. Okay, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. All right, boys, go ahead and stand up. Put your right hand over your heart, and we're going to say the pledge to the American flag. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Next, we're going to say the pledge to the Christian flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for which kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all true Christians in service and in love. Two. Put your right hand up, and we're going to say the, the pledge to the Royal Ranger flag. Ready? Begin. With God's help, I will do my best to serve God, my church, and my fellow men, to live by the Ranger Code, to make the Golden Rule my daily rule. Two. Thank you, boys. You can have a seat now. Hey, boys. Welcome back. It's like, what, week seven, right? The hair is getting a little bit longer. I know that Commander Adriel went ahead and he's going to get his hair cut today, so hopefully he's not looking all nappy-headed like on other days, okay? This week, we're going to go and go through lesson 126. It's going to talk about trends in worship, right? And all of us have different ways of worshiping. Um, so for this week's activity, activity A that you'll see right here, is something real basic. It's asking us to choose a popular song, one we're familiar with, and change the words to reflect uh, the Royal Rangers ministry or our Royal Rangers mission, or uh, the name of the patrol in the group. Now, we've done this before for our camps at the powwow, at the competitions, and if you've been to the JTC and the AJTC, the advanced training camp and the junior training camp, we do the same type of activity then. So, real basic, pick a song we all know, change the words um, that reflect that. Now on for the biblical insight. Uh, in the Bible, dancing was an outward expression of inward joy. That's the way we see it, right? The Feast of the Tabernacles uh, provided for more demonstrations of, of joy than any other feast um, that was uh, described in Scripture. However, men at that time and women uh, had separate areas for dance. And the dance amongst the Hebrews was chiefly employed with the sacred song. The word used for dancing was a Hebrew word, mahol. Now, I probably messed it up. I don't want to offend anybody. That's my best shot. Mahol. And that's from the root meaning to move or to leap in a circle, to twist or turn around. It most naturally indicated that kind of ring or chorus dancing, which appears to have been practiced for many centuries on joyous occasions in which is still practiced in a lot of the in, uh, Eastern countries today. Unlike in the Old Testament, the New uh, Testament has no mention of dancing in worship, except in Luke chapter 15, when it does, uh, it speaks of dancing in celebration over the return of the prodigal son. You guys are familiar with story. The boy asks for his inheritance, goes out, starts partying a little bit, comes back to the father, and there was a big celebration. Some people will use a New Testament silence on dance in worship to prove that it's improper today. 
okay? Others will say that any Old Testament custom that was not um, specifically changed in the New Testament, it can, may still be practiced today, okay? But don't get too caught up into that. What I would like for you to do is pray about it. Reflect on that a little bit. Do your own research. Um, see how God speaks to your heart regarding um, this topic, okay? So that was it for the biblical insight. Now get ready for the composition. Okay, boys, now on to the composition. We learned a little bit about uh, dancing and different types of worshiping. So the Old Testament speaks of dancing in worship, but the New Testament does not. So for the composition portion, simple little question, as you can see right here, it says, what might you speculate, uh, speculate about dancing in worship today? How do you feel about that? I want you to also think about how it is that you worship. Now, everybody, on for my favorite part, the discussion. Remember, this portion, I want you to discuss it in a family setting with your mom or your dad or both. Or caught me up, have a discussion with fellow rangers. But the first recorded instance of dance in the Bible is found in Exodus 15. We're going to be right here, Exodus 15, 20, actually. So what I want you to do is I want you to describe the circumstances. Then I want you to give your opinion as to whether this instance is a basis for similar corporate worship to God today. Sometimes I think, should our worship be one in which we are actively involved, right? We refer to that as participatory. Man, participatory. Man, six syllables. If you can pronounce it more fluid than I can, proud of you. Or should uh, our worship be one in which we're just involved only as an audience, uh, liturgical? That's an also fancy word. So don't think that we don't have to study. We have to study uh, just as you. But should you be actively participating or should you just be involved in the audience, okay? One instance in the Bible that we can refer to as an outward expression for inward joy was um, the great miracle of the parting of the Red Sea and the deliverance from slavery. If you guys remember, Israel expressed uh, enthusiastic joy to God as Miriam, uh, she took out the tambourine and sang and danced. When she was doing that, the other women followed her. Um, the key here, though, is spontaneous exuberance, not choreography. Take that into consideration. Have a discussion with your parents, your mom, your dad, or call me up. Now, as for the evaluation, this is the part where we want you to pray and really uh, look inside of your heart. Okay, there's no wrong answer. This is the evaluation. Look inside of yourself. And what's your preference in style of worship? Is it uh, liturgical, right? Or is it like that big old word, participatory? And not only that, once you figure out uh, what your preference is, I want you to write down why. Does it have to do with your personality? Is it how you feel inside through the spirit? I don't know. Only you can answer that. Okay, boys, now on to the silver merit. Um, still, we're going on. If you remember last week's, you're still probably going to do a continuation uh, of requirement number one, which is to read the biography of a world missionary. And uh, we want you to list the book's title and author. Remember this. Uh, this is something you're going to be working on throughout the five weeks. And if you need help um, looking for a world missionary, let us know. There's plenty in the Assemblies of God, and there's many in Royal Rangers. So uh, that shouldn't be a big problem. For this week, though, we want you to do requirements three and four. Requirement three, as you can see right here, and look in your handout, uh, we want you to participate in the financial support of world missions by giving to or raising funds for a recognized missionary or missions program. Um, a couple examples would be the Speed the Light, uh, Light for the Lost, uh, Boys and Girls Missions Crusade, or Missionary Crusade. Now on to the last requirement, which is requirement four, right here. We want you to correspond. That means write a letter or an email 
or whichever which way, give somebody a call. But we want you to correspond with the world missionary or the entire family uh, serving in at least five different countries. You might think that's a lot, but not. Our church right here um, supports missionary, many missionaries across the world. So we have some here locally and some in foreign countries. So uh, we just want you to write an email or um, somehow to correspond with five different uh, world missionary families, okay? If needed, uh, we can give you that information. Just reach out to us whenever you're ready. Uh, let me know. Let Commander Frankie know. That's it for this week. Thank you. 74, 75. Hey, guys. I see you still sitting around. Uh, we still have the big five challenge coming up. It's five pull-ups, 50 push-ups, 75 air squats, followed by a one mile broken up in half, one at the beginning, one at the end. So if you guys are struggling with your uh, push-ups, I brought some bands here. These bands, you can find them almost anywhere. Your mom might have them, your mom's friend might have them. Doesn't matter, borrow some, get some bands together. This will help you with your push-ups. You can bring them across your back, this way, see here. Okay, create a diamond. So with that dime, you come back, and you work it out, nice and slow. Hold it. This will help you with your uh, push-ups, as well as if you're strongly do pull-ups. Most of you guys don't have a bar to do pull-ups. You can still use these bands. You can pull them across your knee or across your foot, and you just all you do is pull back. Oh, let's see here. Pull back, pull back. Okay, this will help you uh, build strength. Eventually, you'll have, end up doing a pull-up. You'll do a push-up. So stay posted. Uh, this is a race. We'll take it serious. We will be competing. You can call out a commander if you want. Okay? So make it happen. Hi guys, my name is Commander David Bannister. We're going to spend just a few minutes to explore a devotion on the topic of worship. I googled the meaning of worship and this is what I found. Worship is the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for a deity. Now those are some pretty fancy words. Check out the Commander Dave definition of worship. Worship is bragging about God. Here are some examples of worship or ways of bragging about God. Singing, dancing, playing an instrument, proclaiming with boldness the good news of Jesus, and of course, when we spend time in quiet prayer. These examples of worship are found throughout the Bible and are present in churches all over the world today. The prophet Jeremiah in the Bible gives us a great example of bragging about God. We read in Jeremiah chapter 10, beginning at verse 6, No one is like you, O Lord. You are great, and your name is mighty in power. Who should not revere you, O king of the nations? This is your due. Among all the wise men of the nations, and in all their kingdoms, there is no one like you. Now that's some pretty good bragging right there. I'd like to tell you a story about a general in the Marine Corps who's a hero, a man of God, and really good about bragging about God. This is a real account of activity on the ground leading up to Operation Desert Storm in the early 1990s. In August 1990, Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait to take over the country's oil production. He also planned to invade Saudi Arabia, which would give him control of 20% of the world's oil supply. In response to these actions, U.S. President George H. Bush sent troops to Saudi Arabia in an offensive dubbed Operation Desert Storm. General Krulak was deployed as the general with the 2nd Marine Division. General Krulak was ordered to move 140 kilometers near the Kuwaiti border, where General Krulak was ordered to build a temporary base to support 25,000 Marines with just two weeks' time to complete the task. As he did every morning, General Krulak knelt in the chapel to pray. He prayed for a miracle. In one of the driest deserts on earth, General Krulak needed a well that would produce 100,000 gallons of water a day to support the 25,000 Marines of the 2nd Division. So far, the engineer's efforts had produced only dry holes. 
Operation Desert Storm was set to commence. Time was running out. No matter where they searched and no matter who they talked with, there was no water to be found in this region of the desert. On that Sunday morning in late February, while General Krulak was in the chapel praying, a colonel interrupted him. General, there is something I need to show you. General Krulak questioned him. What is it? The colonel replied, sir, you've got to see this. They drove down the base perimeter road, a road that General Krulak had traveled many times. The colonel stopped the jeep, then nodded. General, look over there. About 30 yards off the road, General Krulak saw a white pipe sticking up out of the sand with a cross on top. As General Krulak walked to the base of the pipe, he discovered a large red pump driven by a diesel engine. General Krulak pushed the start button and water flowed from the pipe. He radioed for an engineer to come and test the flow. Sir, you're not going to believe this, the engineer smiled. This well is putting out 100,000 gallons of water per day. General Krulak never passed up an opportunity to brag about the goodness of God. Word quickly spread throughout all the ranks about the general's miracle that day and how good God was. Operation Desert Storm ground offensive begun just a few hours after General Krulak discovered the well. General Krulak spent 35 years in the Marine Corps, reaching the branch's highest rank of Commandant. Now retired, he still never passes up an opportunity to brag about the goodness of God. Guys, worship can come in many forms, loud and bold, as well as quiet and private. I want to encourage you to allocate time every day to brag about God. Some days this may be done privately, and other days it may be done in a more public setting like attending church or even hanging out with friends and eating pizza. But whatever you are doing, brag about God and do it often. Guys, let's take a minute and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that, that you're a great big God who is in control of everything. Even when things appear to be out of control, we know that you are in control. And Father, we thank you for the goodness that you have given to each one of us. And Father, we thank you that we can brag about you and know that you are good in all things. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, hey, thanks for coming with us today. And, and remember to be a blessing to others as you are being blessed daily.